31. Joe Kelly here with the Upper Room. As usual, we're here Mondays 4 to 8 p.m. You also can check out our 24-hour internet broadcast, currently streaming at UpperRoomWithJoeKelly.com, hosted by G. Deso and myself. Uh, we've had this musician, uh, his music, whether he's performing with the band Days of Wild and uh, also Coyote and his own music. He's a tremendous guitarist and songwriter. And uh, his name is Jonathan Fritz from the New York City area. And today he is right here live in the WVOF studios. And he's brought a uh, wide array of guitars. And uh, we want to talk to Jonathan Fritz. So welcome to uh, WVOF in the Upper Room. Oh, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Came, came in on the drive from New Jersey. It was okay. It was great. It was yeah. no hassles, no worries. So I'm just going to have to get you a little closer to the mic. They, they preamp the mics real low. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Oh, perfect. That's so, it. Yeah, so, I mean, we are used to seeing you in New York, and uh, you tour worldwide with uh, such musicians as Lionel Richie, and, uh, but now your own music has taken a different uh, flavor as far as a flamenco and Spanish-style guitar playing. Tell us your first introduction into that. Oh, yeah, well, I was playing in the island of St. Bart's, and I was playing at this club, and they didn't want electric music, so they said, you got to play acoustic. Uh-huh. And I never played acoustic before, really, you know. So I had to adapt, and, and uh, one of the singers in the band was a Portuguese singer, and he, he played a lot of Portuguese and Spanish music, and his name's Paulo Coelho, and he, uh, I, and he had a nylon guitar, and, and he basically gave it to me for a year and said, well, you know, why don't you learn how to play this kind of stuff? We did lots of gigs together. Mm-hmm. And I really like it, because I really grew up being a blues player, and uh, I see a lot of similarities, in rhythmically at least, and also the attitude of the music and the improvisation and the connection really is Africa, you know, I mean, because that's what's in the blues and that's what's in the Spanish music too. And so for me, I, I, like all great art, you kind of feel like you're familiar with it or you've known it before and I just, I just was so turned on to it. It was like a, a lover I couldn't put down, so I just was yeah. just so <laughs> into it and just was, you know, obsessive about it, not in a healthy way, you know, and uh, I just really liked it and tried to create music and put out a CD and uh, and it kind of after a while got a life of its own you know yeah and, and you said you know your initial response how scary is that that you know take the plug out and just uh, play, play something which you're totally for them uh, when, when did you find yourself kind of getting a groove going and say wow you know I'm, I'm getting well, pretty good at this oh I don't know probably like I mean I knew where all the, the notes were and everything, but it, it's a different instrument. It acts differently. So it took a while, but it t- didn't take that long because I'd been playing electric for so long and it's right. not that different, but it took a while. Uh, but uh, it, was, it was still a lot of fun. I mean, I took it as a challenge and, and, and so I had a positive attitude. So it was really a, a, a beautiful process and a lot of fun. It was a good time, you know. So the guitar you have here, at least the guitar, first guitar, tell us about that guitar that you have. This is, this is a friend of mine. This is actually... Uh, uh, <clears throat> it's like a, a f- student model guitar, which it was like 80 bucks, but it, it just, for some reason, it's a magic one. And it just sounds beautiful. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's, it doesn't plug in. It's a real acoustic guitar. It's kind of a, a Spanish guitar, nylon strings. And it's, uh, there's just something about it that right. sounds really magical. It looks pretty shiny. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's beat on a little bit. Uh-huh. I shined it up for the show. You oh, know, it was okay. really thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So Jonathan Fritz is here on the Upper Room and WVOF, and uh, man, you, you want to play something right now? Or uh, yeah, it's, sure. It's, it's all up to you. I'll yeah. play something uh, called Madrina, okay. which I, I wrote. It means Godmother in Italian. Okay. And uh, let's see if uh, you can hear this. Uh. All right, excellent performance, Jonathan Fritz. Thank you. Yeah. So we got to get one of your mic set. Got it. Yeah. All, all that great sounds coming through live. That's nothing on, on no tape. No overdubs. No overdubs. Just uh, two hands and creative uh, genius by Jonathan Fritz. So thanks, man. A lot going on. I, I, you know, I'm just trying to follow a lot, you know, you know, the chords and everything and the playing like that. Is it a lot different from your usual work as far as well, sure. I mean, when you're, the whole song? when you're alone, you know, you want to think of like in that song, I have things going on like... Uh, I'm playing a bass line and a melody kind of at the same time, whereas if basically when you're with a band, the more members you have, 
the less you play, pretty much, you know what I mean? So like in a funk band, it's more ensemble orientated and everybody has an area, a spot that they pick Mm -hmm. and and the more people they have, the less you play, you know, unless you're soloing or something like that. But when you're alone, you want to create the movement of of a bunch of different things. So in a song like that, when I do something like... I'm playing the bass notes over. Right. And uh, and then... uh, playing lines in between there as bass notes so it's kind of like you're the whole band in yourself so you want to uh have extra parts and 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 do like two or three things at once and it gives the illusion of having like a really full sound right it it sounded great um we want to let our listeners know where they can contact you or about your music if they're interested what would be the best way Oh, absolutely. Uh, probably uh, send, just drop me an email and I'll direct you to wherever I'm, I'm building a site now that's not ready. But uh, So if you you can send uh, an email to j-o-n-f-r-i-t-z at o-p-t-o-n-l-i-n-e dot net. Okay, so that's your website. We'll repeat it again throughout yes, the show. Yes, we'll repeat it. You're also endorsed by uh, some Takamini. guitars. Yeah, Takamini. Takamini okay. guitars. Yes, if you go to their website right. and look under Featured Artists, you'll see right. it. A shot of me playing a nylon guitar. They gave me th- this beautiful nylon guitar over here, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's great. And hey, you know, I, I brought you some. I know it's not much, but do you, you read guitar player and stuff like that? Uh, sometimes, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah, these are yours. Have you oh. ever seen them already? Oh, a gift. <laughs> yeah, I brought radio you some station stuff. gift. Yeah, Dig it. there you go. All right. So uh, thanks. Great guitarist Jonathan Fritz is here, and uh, he'll be with us um, till five thirty. And uh, we just heard Madrina. Now, Madrina, that's, uh, you said Italian for? Godmother. Godmother, okay. Yes. How, you know, let's talk about your background in music going back to when you first got the, the music bug. Where, where did it start? Or where did you grow up? I grew I was born in Manhattan, and I, I moved when I was very young and, and basically grew up and went to high school mm-hmm. near Wappingers Falls, which is up near Poughkeepsie, about 70 miles up from Manhattan on the Hudson River. Right. And I've lived many places. I lived in Boston. I lived in Europe. But uh, <clears throat> basically, my, my family was musical, and, and it, I started playing piano when I was like four and uh, played all sorts of other instruments, and uh, I played flute in band when I, in school and, and trumpet. And uh, the first stringed instrument I played was banjo. I was really into that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't play guitar till later, but I was just, I heard (coughs) somebody before my time, but somebody played me some Jimi Hendrix, the song called Voodoo Child. Okay. And I heard the sound and I heard the guitar sound. I was like, what, what is, what is a sound? (laughs) Whatever it is, I got to get a piece of it. Uh And from that moment on, and I really grew up with Steve Ray Vaughan and that was a big influence on me and my younger playing. I, I just played blues for like years and years and I just was so into that and Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan's and then from them I kind of branched out to a lot of different styles and the more you live and play as a musician you have to learn other styles in order to make yourself more valuable the only exception is if you maybe have tremendous success when you're very young mm-hmm. but uh, other than that you know it's it's just been fun because it's all music to me you know so there's really no difference it's like languages you know it's just different ways to express the same things you know human quality emotions and feelings now you you're based out of now the new york city area probably one of the the toughest and and you know talented places around the world um blues just not a lot of places to play the blues anymore in new york um no you have to go to europe really right right and and you know I play in Europe too, and and I love playing in Europe because they really, they really. I don't know what it is. It's more in the culture, or you know, even the a lot of the governments over there support the arts. So you know, from a very young age, people I think value the arts maybe a little more than they do in America or something, because uh, you know, since the twenties, uh, American, you know, swing blues jazz artists have been going to Europe. Uh, because they can't make money in the states because they love it and they get treated so beautifully over there you know you get treated like a real artist and and that's wonderful you know so i like it both but also new york has a way wherever i play around the world people music people that are really sensitive to music and musicians are kind of like you're from new york aren't you there's a certain way there's a certain attitude there's a certain swagger Mm -hmm. and a certain uh, way of playing that people come from all over the world to new york just to get a piece of that you know Mm -hmm. And so for me, and a lot of the, the greatest players in the world are in New York, and, and some of them are friends of mine. So for me, I need that constant uh, uh, input and, and, and inspiration mm-hmm. to, to always be around the best. Because, you know, I mean, you, I could live in Europe and be a star, and, and, uh, but, but uh, 
I need to be in New York just for the challenge of it and, and because there's just so much great playing going on. Yeah. You know? so we, we, uh, why don't we let you get yourself settled and play something from the CD? Right on. Uh, then you're not going to play live today. What, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Let's what? play... Uh, um, uh, let's play a song called. This is a song called the Cabello Sav- Savaje. Okay. My Spanish is in gr- accent. That's an American accent, but that basically <laughs> means uh, wild horses. Okay. This is uh, music from Jonathan Fritz, our special and guest, right yeah, now. Yeah, it's the second track. Yep. Yeah. Got it all set. Oh, you know. Yeah. Oh, I got. I got the cheat sheet here. <laughs> right on. You're yeah. Prepared. Yeah. So, so this is a music from Jonathan Fritz. We'll come back and speak more with Jonathan in just a few moments. All right. That is. Music from Jonathan Fritz, Caballo. And there's a little more to uh, that title, right? Caballo, Caballo Savaje. Okay. So, uh, Savage Wild Horses, basically. Okay. And, and you were telling me off air Crazy about horses. a uh, specific technique which you were privileged to uh, learn from a, a gypsy player, right? Yeah. Uh, it, the, a lot of that uh, flamenco style is they don't use a pick, so it's mm-hmm. all, and it's, and it's very rhythmic, and especially gypsy. F- Gypsy flamenco is so rhythmically exciting, you know, like because it's like polyrhythmic from Africa and then the harm, harmony from like the old European world. So it's a right. great mixture of, of many cultures. But uh, he showed me. I I I tried to write a song uh, years ago when I was in St. Bart's. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the guys at the club I was working at said, "John, do you play any Spanish nylon guitar? Do you play any flamenco?" And I was like, oh, "I love that music, but you know, I don't know anything about it." So. And he said, well, you know, would you play some stuff? I said, well, I'll try to figure something out. So the next day, he put in the paper that I'm going to play, John John Fritz is going to play uh, Spanish guitar. And I was like, you know, what are you doing? I don't know this music, you know. I, right. And so, so I got hold of some recordings, and, and I, I just frantically tried to create a song that had the elements of stuff. Right. And uh, when, I, when, I, when I did it, there's a certain kind of th- thing that they have in flamenco, which is like... <laughs> That type of thing, and, and I didn't know how to do it, so I did it with my fingers like this. And when I met this flamenco player, he was like, he heard that, and he was like, "Oh no, let me let me show you how uh-huh. it is." And so he showed me, and and he, they take their fingers and they go. So it's a very, very strange uh, kind you of get thing. A fuller sound. A What's that? Bit. You get a fuller sound. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it's more rhythmic and it's more, it's more like a butterfly. Than this it has more muscle in it, and this is just. Less just a different sound. They're both right. valid, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, that helped. And he showed me some things that where you you keep rhythm on the guitar, like uh, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And that's just really exciting to play when you're when you're alone, because not only can you play like uh, uh, the bass and the melody, but you also have some some tapping and some rhythm going on. Right. And that's just it's just really exciting. You know? And I learned. Well, oh, this was years ago. We used to record some concerts down at a, a local club here, and it was my first acoustic show to record. And I, I'm not an engineer at any, any stretch of the imagination, but I wasn't used to the oh, hand yeah. slapping. And oh, I'd see the needle go like this. I came home, I was like, "Whoa, I got, I got to get used to that lower a little bit." Yeah. Oh yeah. So it was, it was peaking every time you. It was peaking every time. Yeah, that, yeah. That's you know, I learned the hard way. <laughs> I didn't know you were yeah. a sound man. No, I'm not a sound man. This was just sort <laughs> of radio show to record some artists oh, I see, down I see, at I a see, club, yeah. and you know kind of like a, a booty way to record it but, but it, you know some great artists um now now besides your own music we were talking and of course we we know here but uh you're a world traveled musician playing with i mean we mentioned lionel richie one of the top guys in, in the, the music business for a long time how did you uh become a, a side man and working with uh, these guys touring around the world and doing these big gigs well i think it, it comes from really the desire and the love of it above all else because when I look at my life and as I get more successful and I look at my life when I wasn't successful, I'm, I'm still doing the same things. Mm-hmm. So if you ha- come into success and you, I still do the same things, I still, I still work on music, I play a lot, I record. And, and the more success I get, the, I keep doing that. So I think that's what it is. It just comes out of a deep love for it and, and something that you can't put down. It's, it's like I, I didn't choose music, it chose me, so I don't really have a choice or I'll be very unhappy, mm-hmm. you know, or and right. you know, die slowly not to be too dramatic, but you know, that's kind of the truth. So it's kind of a calling that, that just it it spoke to me before I even had a chance to decide what to do. It, it just it just was. So in that sense, you know, it makes m- 
certain choices in life easier in a way to really know what you want to do because if you do something that you love and you can be successful at it you can be you can be a good person you can be kind to people you can be a positive force you can be a ray of light because you know you don't have you you don't have anger because you get it out through your art you know and that's something that i think if a lot of people could find an outlet for the music and even people that can't find it they find it through art so i believe that uh, and i talk about this a lot with my friends that artists are especially musicians are shamans modern shamans of our time period and they help people get in touch with certain spiritual aspects or certain parts of themselves or or certain uh, uh feelings of what commonness of what it is to be human you know what i mean and so that people don't feel so alone you know so so going into a a gig auditioning or or getting in the band with uh, Lionel Richie what's that like and you know well let's uh, my fr- uh, my friend uh, i have a friend uh, Ben Morrow's great guitar player is in LA right now and he plays with a lot of people and uh we were both on the scene in New York we were both east coast guys that grew up playing in clubs right. all our lives and uh, we used to sub each other gigs in New York all the time, you know. When, and uh, and then he got this gig with Lionel Richie, and he toured with him, did a couple world tours, and uh, for a few years. And then he was playing with a lot of other people, and he got a gig with Britney Spears. He got the, uh, for the last tour, and mm-hmm. so he needed a sub for Lionel's gig. So they trusted him enough to just recommend me. So like, cause like. I've never gotten anything from auditions. It's always because somebody in the organization right. knows who you are and knows what you can do. Mm-hmm. And so he recommended me for the gig, and I didn't even rehearse with the band. I, he sent me the live tapes so I can get the arrangements and kind of told me what what to expect, and I just I just studied it on my own. And then I met the band half an hour before I went on and met Lionel Richie, like half an hour before wow. the first show. <laughs> so they kind of threw me in the fire, right. but that was great. I, I'm used to that. I've done that with so many other people. Mm-hmm. It's just that... You know, in in a way, it's right. a great gig, but it's also j- uh, just another gig in yeah. a way. Yeah, I know? remember. Uh, I don't know if you remember. You mentioned that one of the better things about doing a big ten thousand, twenty thousand seat uh, arena tour is that you have someone to carry your gear from city to city. I think you told me that in New York one, uh, one time. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's the only yeah. difference. Right. Is yeah. I don't have to carry right. my own stuff. <laughs> right. Right. And I don't have to tune my guitars. And right. they And they. It's so funny because my. You know, I I play like. Uh, 348 shows a year you know with different people you know right. all different uh, electric crew. and so my gear is, is so beat on so when i and and i was working so much and what right before my first lionel gig i i uh had uh all my gear was like broken and and, and i didn't have a chance to fix everything so when i got there i i got hold of the sound man or the uh-huh. my uh, guitar tech right. and he and he just fixed everything so it was really good so i got everything repaired and 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 up in shape and running so that was how good. about guitar techs are, are they do you find a lot of good guitar players amongst them, or is it more just sound? No, focused? I think I think pretty much every guitar tech can play guitar mm-hmm. really pretty well, you know. Okay, right. And this uh, the the guitar techs uh, are really, uh, as far as the culture of of uh, endorsements and things like that, they're the people to know. The guitar techs, like you know, when when I did Lionel's gig, they were the guitar tech. One of them, I had many of them, but uh, this one, a guy, Buddy Blaze, who's a well-known guitar luthier and builder out in L.A. He's like, oh, so who's your endorsements? Who does, who's your strings? I was like, I, I don't have any. And he's uh, like, what? You, and he's like, how did you get here and you don't have any? So he said, all right, let me make a few phone calls. So he made some phone calls, hooked me up with it, with it, and uh, th- with the string endorsement and something else I can't remember. And uh, another tech hooked me up with this Takamini endorsement. So uh, it's the guitar techs that, that are in oh, touch yeah. with the with the <laughs> with the companies, and they're the guys to talk to for like things right. like that. So, you know, so don't piss off a guitar tech, right? <laughs> exactly. The guitar right. techs are your friend. Right, right, right. <laughs> hey, it's five o'clock. Uh, Joe Kelly here with the Up Room. Jonathan Fritz will be with us for the next half hour. He's been performing music from. Uh, his CD and uh, uh, songs to be recorded. Uh, we'll talk about another collaboration. He's been working with another gentleman. And uh, you, you want to go with something live? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'll do a version of uh, one of the songs on my CD called uh, uh, um, El, v- El Volador. Okay. And that, and. So this is Jonathan Fr- Yeah. That stuff. And it, <laughs> it's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Man. Mixing it all together. It's just music. Yeah, that's and, all that's uh, left. All the great styles are created, so it's up to us. Right. Plus, also as the world gets smaller, there's going to be there's going to have to be a common language mm-hmm. that's going to unite people. And music has always been that. It's always been a common language that you know you don't have to you don't have to speak the language of the culture, but you understand. And that's why I think music can be you know it can be a, a savior of the world. You know, mm-hmm. I know it has been in my life. You know. Right. Right. 
So, uh, Jonathan Fritz, if you just tuned in, is uh, my special guest here at WVOF, and always great to see you and uh, have you down in the studio finally. Yeah, we've yeah. been talking about this for years. Yeah, so yeah. I'm so glad to finally get down here. Y- you uh, often play a place uh, called The Bitter End, which is legendary on Bleecker Street. Um, any upcoming dates? I know I know. Gaiosha sends all the emails for days a while, but uh, how, how about yourself? Where are you going to be performing coming up? Uh, let's see. Uh, I can't even remember. I, I'm actually t- uh, playing... Uh, uh, I have to look at my schedule. I can't even think. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm out of town this week, and uh, I'm just chilling. Right. And working on my CD. I'm working uh, on my second CD. I've I've written all the songs for my second s- Spanish music CD, mm-hmm. and I'll be recording that probably the next two weeks. Okay. Or two months. So you'll be you know. busy doing that. Yeah. But yeah, I'll send you a thing. I I don't have my book in front of me, but right. Uh, and uh, Days of Wild. You know, how about bringing your your music with the Funksters? What was that like? Their reception to uh, what you're doing now? Because they they love it. Right, I mean, right. especially guy guy's been very uh, guy's the drummer. He's kind of the 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 uh, uh, traffic director of the right. of of the band. And who, who he's carries a running conversation during the show while he's performing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> he directs traffic while while we're going on. You know? Right. Right. Uh, but no, they they everybody. I can't believe the response. Like amongst my friends and people in New York, there's like a buzz about this Spanish thread CD, and um, I I couldn't be happier because I really did it because I had to because it was just expressions and feelings that I had but to have it be so well received it it's like beyond my I didn't really have expectations but it's we, right. if I did it would be beyond them so yeah. it's it's just been great it's just been such a positive response that's why I'm already working on a second one because right. you know I can tour behind this stuff it, it's yeah. something and that's really exciting for me you know all different kinds of venues where can people once again if, if they just tune in get in contact with you whether they're Music yeah. venue owners or, or fans want to get the CD? Oh, absolutely. Uh, just uh, my website. I don't have a website up yet, but uh, my email is uh, J-O-N-F-R-I-T-Z okay. at O-P-T-O-N-L-I-N-E dot net. Okay, so John Fritz at optonline dot net. Yes. And, uh, or you can contact us. Up room with Joe Kelly. We'll put you in contact with John. Yeah, uh, you can call Joe Kelly. His phone number is... Yeah, there you uh, go. <laughs> It's private number. <laughs> hey, you know, um, I don't know if this is ready for airplay, but yeah, why don't you okay. do because uh, the first song, yes, y- you. I just mixed this yeah, uh, a couple you, days ago. Right, you've been uh, touring and recording, and you have become collaborated with a gentleman out of New Mexico, right? Yeah, I met this cellist, Michael Cott, and uh, he's a, he's a great player on lots of records. And uh, like we spoke before, he was right. on that record with the Wooten Brothers, mm-hmm. which I think was Grammy nominated, and. Right. Uh, Anyway, great player. When I was I was playing a week of gigs under my own name in Santa Fe, and I just met him t- uh, out there, and we just did gigs together, and we hit it off. And I, as you know, I travel with my rec- studio. I have a, a Pearl Tools rig right. that fits in my carry-on bag, and everywhere I go, I record. So I was like, "So what are you doing? You want to go record?" So I, I met Michael Cott, and we just went back to my friend's house in Santa Fe, and and just recorded all night and uh, this is what we one of the things we recorded when I originally wrote w- one of my songs called Mesa Verde it, it had such it has an opening like this and when I heard that I was like oh this is perfect for a cello but at the time I wrote it, I didn't know any cello players uh-huh. so you know six months later I meet this guy Michael Cotton I said listen uh, would you play cello on this one tune he's like yeah sure so I set him up put some mics on him and had him record five tracks mm-hmm. five stereo tracks five passes you know one one playing just low bass notes like right. pads another playing melody one just uh, pizzicato, pizzicato is that mm-hmm. where you're plucking mm-hmm. okay and another uh another me- crazy melody and uh and then i just mixed him pulled out a few notes and uh that's what this is and i just right. finished mixing it last week so so any truth to the rumor that the kid is uh at the local record shop trying to pick up the cello What's the that? kid on the bass? The is kid. He, is he gonna play play yeah, cello? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who said that? No, I'm just messing with you. Yeah. You're talking about Brett? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Brett's in in Europe now, you know. Oh, is he with okay. Anastasia? Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's busy doing that. Uh, yeah. I can't imagine him picking up a cello, yeah. but you know, stranger things have happened. Right, right. You know? <laughs> All right. This is uh, Michael Cotton. And, uh, yeah, this is a song called Ma- Mesa Verde. Okay, we'll listen to it right now. You're in tune to WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. All right, that is beautiful music, newly created, Mesa Verde. 
with uh, Jonathan Fritz. That's right. That's yeah. brand new music. That's, yeah. that's and the cellist once again, uh, Michael Cott. You can okay. Google his name and, and see who he's about. Uh, okay, so you guys will be looking K O T T K O T T. I'm sure you guys will be doing more shows together. Hopefully here on the East Coast. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Now, now we were talking off air in between takes, and, and you know the importance of creating your own music and. and you you have a portable uh, recording studio that I, th- I think you even fit Absolutely. in the bag right there and exactly yeah yeah I have a, a, a laptop Macintosh and I run Pro Tools and and I bring a couple good microphones and everywhere I go when I'm on the road I always can record and I meet musicians in every city and if I meet somebody and, and we get along or play I say come back let's make some music and that's what I do all over the world everywhere I go when I go to St. Bart's I record some of the people that that are there. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoy it, and it's a good way to meet people, and it's also very fulfilling to me because I get to see the flavor of how these people feel music and how they do it, and then, and then I can apply that to my own music, and I, so it, it, it really, it's very fulfilling, you know. Now, you've obviously been into a lot of music over the years, starting with the blues and rock and now uh, flamenco-style guitar. Um, how about your listening habits? What do you listen when you're home and just want to... Say, hey, I want to check this out from somebody else. What what you been listening to? Late, lately, I've been completely obsessive with uh, Spanish and flamenco music. Okay. Because, you know, I mean, there's a, it's a whole tradition mm-hmm. of, and, you know, people have lifetimes of this. So, right. And I don't really know much about it, so I'm trying to catch up, <laughs> catch you know. Up, right? And play and try to understand the structures and how, because, you know, the, the songs themselves are an expression and not only how the people play so you have the composition of the song which is a, an expression and then how the person plays in its expression since i don't know that much about the music i listen to uh, i i have a lot of flamenco records that i'm constantly rotating and listening to and some of them are just so amazing like any style of music that i can play them like i can't play too much music right after another but some of these songs are so beautiful and so d- d- emotionally deep right. that that i can play them uh, uh, right after each other uh, uh, many times so that's really what I've been obsessing on recently because I'm really trying to catch up and understand the vernacular and, and how to speak within that language and not that I have to do what they do but I have to know what what they do in order to to go on a tangent or whatever because you know my my CD which I gave you it's not it's flamenco-esque but it's you know it's not really straight up flamenco music but it doesn't have to be you know and I think it's beautiful so it doesn't matter as long as it's great music but that flavor right now I'm just I'm just so like I said it's a lover I can't put down and it's just it's it's haunting me you know how about uh, demanding physically playing I mean I know it's electric as opposed to acoustic but uh, the hardest thing for me is being an electric player who I mm-hmm. play with my fingers too but mm-hmm basically play a lot with a pick not playing with a pick and doing stuff like and playing with my fingers like a bass okay. player plays right. you know okay. that's been the hardest thing for me because I don't have any facility you know because right. I'm like a child I'm starting a child uh-huh. uh, from the beginning but what's good about it is since I don't have facility I have to focus on the emotional contact context and that's why it's so much like blues to me because you know a lot of blues it's it's not about what you play it's about how you play it and the emotion that you put into it and how you embellish notes you know you could you could go or you can go you know, I mean, and those are like, there's a big difference between those two, and they're both valid, but so when I don't have the facility, I concentrate on the emotional aspect and the embellishment of how you play the notes, you know, because, you know, you don't have to have tremendous facility to, to be emotional and, and soulful, you know. Well, you're, you're involved, uh, besides touring around the world, with uh, you're also heavily involved with the New York music scene, Bleecker Absolutely. Street, yeah, and you've always been one of the nicest musicians around, so i got to give you kudos for that. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Now, uh, upcoming, I'm sure you'll be touring and, and doing stuff for your own music and playing with different variety of bands in New York City. Absolutely. Bleecker yeah. Street, yeah. Yeah, I play yeah. with, like, maybe at any given time, like like a lot of people in Bleecker Street, like with 10 or 20 different bands at any given time, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like a hired gun for a lot of people. And I really enjoy that. I love it. I love, you know, every night of the week I'm playing something different. Well, one of the, I think the first time I saw you play live was uh, with Coyote when you had, like, that five... Yeah, guitar the, orchestra which was pretty amazing the electric guitar big band yeah that was an amazing yeah. concept i met this guy kyle one time and we yeah. just hit it off and and i gave him some of my music and and when he heard the music he's like you know i've been looking for someone like you i know that you could you have you can handle this kind of thing i have this idea i want to make a big band and i want to write big band music that's like funky so the bass and drums will be like p-funk mm-hmm. uh, uh dennis chambers era right. you know 
but the music will be big band, but there'll be no horns. It'll be all guitars playing with distortions, kind of like Brian May or, or something like that. And, and, I, and I looked at him and said, you're crazy, let's do it. You know? <laughs> right. And that's why I come to New York, and that's why a lot of people come to New York, because there are, are so many projects like that. Like, and we created this band that, you know, it's very challenging, because for one song, you have to remember, like, maybe 20, 30 different lines that are different, you know, so it's, it's an investment, you know. Right. And, uh, but that's what I love about New York, because it has that, and, it, and, there's, and there's nowhere, probably nowhere else in the world did something like that but in new york you will because you have right. such a melting pot and mix of cultures and that really interests me because as a musician you know you you have you have many roads but two main roads you are either you can either be a traditionalist and you feel that the universe or god has intended for you to play uh, a style and carry on the tradition of that style and not stray from it mm-hmm. which i respect people like that or you say i'm going to uh not I'm going to try to create new styles and mix old styles. Right. And I, I, I have a foot in both worlds because I have right. tremendous respect for styles and I love them and, and I want to learn about them. But at the same time, I feel like it's up to my generation to create a music that hadn't existed before them. Mm-hmm. So I, it's important to me to have both, but more a mixture of styles. And like we were saying before, as the world gets smaller, we, we need a language to unite all people and that's yeah. going to be music. And the more your music includes elements of all different cultures, mm-hmm the more your voice will be heard and the more the message of positivity can be spread, yeah. you know. So it's going to be real interesting what recording your own studio <laughs> in totally. the future. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's just been great. I, I can't believe it since I invested and got the studio. It's like, uh, it's like I have a... a, a I don't know, like a neon sign on my door. Musicians have just been coming in, and it's just been—it's just been so amazing to me. And I've been learning so much about different styles, and it's just been—it's just been su- such a good time, you know. Well, we want to thank you, Jonathan Fritz, for coming by WVOF the first of many times. We hope. That's right. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. I'm so glad to be a part of this, and I just want to say, I thank you for helping the independent music because, like we were talking before, the music business—it's always been a CD business, and it's always been not so great. But what? What are you going to do about it? You know what I mean? Right. You can complain about it and say it's not fair, which it isn't, mm-hmm. but but what do you do? Well, what you do is you create your music constantly and you play all the time, and that's the answer to it, and you find outlets. Like, I mean, even Prince and, uh, right. says, right. you know, he puts you your radio thing on his, yeah, uh, when on his website, yeah. right? I mean, right. what deeper compliment is that from somebody who doesn't like the media? You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Right. Or doesn't yeah. think the media is uh, treats him fairly. So I say bravo to you, Joe Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Yeah. And, so you want to play one more, and then uh, you want to play yeah. something live, or, and then uh, maybe we'll play... Play something from a Days of Wild, one of their three new live CDs. So, Jonathan Fritz, once again, John Fritz, J O N F R I T Z at optonline.net. And also the website again for the, your endorsement? Oh, uh, Takamini? Oh, yeah. If you just go to takamini.com okay. and look under featured artists and scroll on my name, you get my mug. And that way, that way there'll be a link to my website, which I'm building now. So, that's. Okay, cool. That's the, uh, how you can get it. So this is Jonathan Fritz. Thanks, John. My pleasure. This is a song called Presquille, which is, uh, I think, it's French for almost an island or a peninsula. And it's the name of a hotel that I was at when I was in San <laughs> That sounded great. We were getting final uh, snapshots. I forgot to write. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it's it. Let's immortalize yeah. the moment. Yeah, so that's Jonathan Fritz. Yeah, that was great. And... Uh, Written about a hotel in St. Bart's, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It must be nice out there. It's gorgeous out there. I live a beautiful life there. A lot of these songs I wrote when I was down there. Oh, okay. Because I have a lot of free time and I'm just playing at night and I. Right. I I'll take one more picture if I can. Oh, yeah. No, I think it ran out of batteries, but we got a couple good ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And. Great. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we've. Uh, we'll get into something. Uh, Days of Wild to have three. New CDs. Oh, I got a good one. Yeah. How about okay. uh, there's one? Uh, do you have uh, Fritz Grit Skillet mix? I don't think I brought that. I should have brought it. which one is that off the uh, um, Black album? Let me see. No, no, it's, no I got it's, the, it's uh, the uh, oh, it's the Black. Which I, one's that? The Black album. The Black. This is this is the ones before the past one. Oh, okay. I'm bring the, well, no. Oh, good thing you reminded me because this in, interview will air in its in its entirety for three days and three nights. 
at our upper room with Joe Kelly site in a couple of weeks. So oh, great! So we'll add that in Fritz Grits skillet mix. Yeah, because it's funny. Yeah. I, I did. I had this. This I'm doing this thing with a Wawa that's like just really crazy, nasty, yeah. and bizarre. And, and, right. And that's what guy named it Fritz Grits skillet mix. I think right. it's so funny because well, it's really well, I, you're gonna hear that it's one. It's greasy, too. stick in the mud funk. You know? Right. <laughs> Always check out Days of Wild too. Besides Jonathan Fritz solo. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I call it sketches of funk because. Yeah, right. That's right. That's what we do. We just do sketches of funk all night long. Somebody wants to go somewhere, the whole band goes with them. So it's a great right. experimentation. And, and if you're outside Bleecker Street, you guys go on the last band of the night. It's like okay. Yeah, one who's going to be here tonight? You see, Gaiosius. Okay, who's going to be here, Gaiosius? Well. Fritz going to be here. Uh, well, we'll see who else is going to be here. Somebody will just stroll up. He goes, okay, he's playing tonight. Exactly. Yeah, they never. we never know what the band's going to be, and that's kind of exciting. So it's a different different members like every gig. Right. Wow. You know, who, depending on who's in town, who's on the road, who's back, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's just really And you get fun. to see Jimi Hendrix, too. Exactly. Yeah, he plays sure. there. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix plays. He was there right. the other night. We yeah. played this past weekend. We had some great shows this past weekend. It was Did so you much do fun. something with uh, Frank McComb? Was was that a couple weeks ago? Oh, I I, I didn't play that show, but oh, yeah, okay, uh, but right. yeah, no, Frank McComb was great. Uh, right, I played after him, and I've been playing okay. with Richard Lee's. Uh, you know Richard Lee, trumpet player. Yeah, I heard his name. Yeah, uh, we w Irrational Logic. You know, a lot of some of the same members play in that band. You know, okay, because all all the musicians are incestuous in New York, which is really great. Right. You know, yeah, working on each other's projects. So. Exactly, yeah. totally. Um, we'll go with uh, Out of Time, but not Out of Funk. This is Days of Wild. Go to. Uh, webtoons.com also you can google days of wild and pulls up with the, the most updated site that's up there i yeah. think so it's yeah. a long a long address but it's up there i was on there today so yeah okay yeah. i pulled a picture of you from there oh, so yeah. it's on, our, on the front page of our website so yeah oh yeah i wondered how you got that i was like yeah i wish i known that i would have sent you a picture <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. I we got you just jamming and one guy smoking a cigarette. <laughs> right, that's actually but, Sandro, the trumpet player. Yeah, I'm sorry, right. yeah, trombone player. Trombone player, yeah. yeah. Free player, too, yeah. Oh, amazing, yeah. Yeah. All right. Days well. Thanks, John. All right, thank you very much.